What's up guys, how you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And today's video, should Christians watch the new Redeeming Love movie? We doing a movie reaction up in here. Yeah. Morgan, <laughs> she, some of you guys might just get angry right off the bat. Morgan went and saw this movie last night. Well, yes, I did. It was for review purposes. Only <laughs> I mean, for educational. Research purposes. Only research purposes. There was no <laughs> entertainment that she was excited about. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she went and saw it. Guys, listen, as we get going with whether or not Christians should go see this, is it too steamy, too erotic, or no, like th there was lots of good stuff in this film christian should go see it I, we're gonna get into that in just a moment i got notes as usual <laughs> but as I got we, notes morgan has notes up here <laughs> as usual um yeah as we get into this i i ask that if you are coming on this video really feeling strongly one way or the other totally fine but i ask that you would just humble yourself in the side of the humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> Remember that song from the 90s? No. <laughs> oh. Just lower your guard a little bit so that we can have a little bit more of a constructive conversation. Yeah, let's have a real combo, you guys. Let's not get cray-cray up in here. Let's not get cray-cray up in here. It's already cray-cray up in here with my nausea, okay? <laughs> I'm glad you're here, baby. I'm glad you're here with us. <sighs> well, me too. I mean, I'm the one who saw the movie, so it'd be weird if it was just you. I saw the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> there has been oh, lots of discussion. Um, but yeah, as we get into it, Morgan. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We just hit 150,000 subscribers, you guys. This could be titled 150,000 subscriber celebration. It could be. Slash redeeming love. <laughs> but it's not going to be. But thank you all to all of you who have subscribed if you haven't just go ahead and hit that little button it's okay don't be afraid yeah we make videos on culture and social issues from a christian perspective to help you have hope and be free i just saw that yasmina hopkins left a super chat thank you yasmina you said little mm -hmm. gift for baby god bless you guys <laughs> thank you that's really sweet and we appreciate that all right, and also I just hopped on Patreon. We have 292 patrons guys. on the road to 300 where we're going to go live for 12 hours on YouTube. If you're not a patron, you want to go deeper with us. We do patron-only podcasts and um, Zoom calls and whatnot. Please consider doing it. It is literally the way we're able to do this YouTube channel. You guys are the reason that we're here doing what we're doing. So yes. hop on Patreon. Link is below. Let's get to 300 patrons. All right. Morgan, I am sitting on my phone. We're getting, we're on the topic, all right? Okay. Of redeeming Good. love. I'm sitting on my phone <laughs> and I see, for my first kind of thing I see is some content creators. I'm, I'm not going to mention names right now. Some Christian content creators make a post advertising for redeeming love saying, guys, this book was so impactful. You guys know about this movie, right? Like, Francine Rivers, the author, wrote a book 20-ish years ago called Redeeming Love, loosely based off of the Bible story of Hosea and Gomer. It's a gritty, intense, intense, heavy, sexual story in the Bible. There, I mean, just spoiler alert, mm -hmm. you guys... <laughs> You guys read through the Bible, particularly the Old Test, the Old <laughs> Testament. It gets gritty. It gets sexual sometimes. It gets heavy. That's just the reality of it. This story got turned into a book, and then, as of like a week ago, is when this movie dropped. Mm -hmm. Friday, I think, or is it Friday? Got turned into a movie, PG thirteen. Francine Rivers, I believe, had a good amount of say in the movie, but it was produced by a secular yeah. studio and whatnot. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to where we are today. I see Christian influencers. They post about it advertising for the movie. That was my first thing. And I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I might go give this movie a watch. I've heard some stuff about the book and good stuff. And then a few days later, I see another Christian influencer make a post saying 
Should Christians go see Redeeming Love? I've, I'm being asked about this. Here's my answer. No. Christians should not go see this. It has sexual... Um, it, it's, it's a, it is explicit sexually. Let no unwholesome thing come before your Christian's eyes. She quoted a Bible verse. And that was her position, and she uh, dropped the link to a plugged-in review. I guess it was Focus on the Family's plugged-in review. I don't know if you had a chance of glancing at that. I did not look at the review, but Paul shared plenty of it with me. I feel like he shared enough for me to know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I read that, and actually I, I screenshotted it so I can read a little bit of it. So I'm sitting here like two Christian influencers, very different sides of the spectrum. And that is when I was like, let's dig into this. And then you told me, hey, Paul, I'm going to see this movie with my <laughs> friend, unbeknownst to me or any of the kind of like controversy around it. Yeah, so I will just put it out there. I have not read the book. I think I've read like the first chapter or like literally the first page of the book and I got bored. <laughs> oh. And so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to keep reading this. That was like several years ago. Then when I saw the movie was coming out, I was kind of like, eh, I probably won't go see it. But then my friend Caroline was like, I read the book. I want to see the movie. Will you go watch it with me? And I was like, sure. I didn't really think anything of it. I knew, again, that it was a uh, based off of a Bible story, um, loosely based. And that it was written by a Christian author. I mean, I remember when the book was big 15 yeah. years ago. My sister read it when she was like a 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe just the circles I was in, but I heard really good things about the book. Yeah, same. I had heard all kinds of good things from everyone that I've ever talked to that are, in my opinion, solid believers. Mm -hmm. They say they love this book. It's such a redeeming story. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll go see it with you. And then Paul comes home and tells me that there's all this controversy. And then my friend is messaging me saying she's getting a bunch of pushback for saying she liked the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so let me just read you guys a little bit. I, I posted on my Instagram as soon as I saw the kind of controversy that it was generating. And I said, guys, what do you think? And I made a little question box. Follow us on Instagram if you don't. We post a lot on there, at Morganologus, at Paulologus. But I did a little question box, box and said, you guys, where are you at with this? Should Christians be going to see this movie? Um, and here's just a few quick ones. Someone said, I saw it last night. It had some pretty intense stuff. I saw it with a group of adult women. I was thankful I didn't go with my teenage daughter or husband. Someone else said, no, it seems to have inserted two sex scenes that are pushing the boundaries. But then someone said, well, the Bible is explicit. So yeah, Christians should go see it. Um, so this is just kind of giving you guys a little bit of insight. I actually, we posted on our Paul and Morgan Instagram today, and I just thought this was really funny. Uh, a girl... Um, a girl wrote in and said, I went to see it with some people from my church. I picked the wrong day to sit next to my pastor. Oh, no. Oh, that is awkward. <laughs> oh, that was a nightmare. And then right before she posted that, shout out to our boy John Cooper from Skillet commented on our post and said this is very helpful thanks for doing it i have many friends asking my wife if they should or should not see it i'll pass this along and thanks for being pa faithful thank you john um so all right to the meat and potatoes meat and potatoes we've taken long enough i i realize that some of you guys might say like you shouldn't be able you shouldn't do a review if you haven't read the book well this is me just reviewing the movie and what is in the movie specifically so just you know deal with that yeah um and people are asking should i go watch the movie well here's my thoughts i uh went in now after having talked with paul and my other friend like very aware of like okay like i'm gonna see you know does this really push the limits and then we had several people suggest we listen to this podcast um that a woman made um a lot of people or a good amount of people were talking about this podcast and saying 
I will not be seeing the movie because I listened to this podcast. It is by a lady. It's called Verity, the podcast. Yes. It's called Verity. I thought I screenshotted, but yeah, you guys you guys know. Oh, here it is. It's uh, Her name is Felicia Masonheimer. Yeah, and so she did an, a podcast titled Should Christian Women Go and See Redeeming Love? Um, and she is very, very much against it. She's very much against the book. Um, we listened to a good majority of the podcast, and I just want to say that I see where she's coming from, and I agree with some of her points, um, and I really appreciate her heart and desire to protect other women's hearts and minds and spirits and, you know, encourage them not to possibly fall into the trap of lust and whatever, sex- sexual immorality. So she said I that appreciate she, her. She said she, for kind of her experience and what she's seen that the book was kind of the gateway for Christian women to slide into erotica or the erotica genre Mm -hmm. of of books so so with that being said though there was a lot that she said that i did not agree with um i believe this is just a case by case thing i don't think it's a oh all christians should go watch this movie no um or all christians should not watch this movie no i went excuse me and I watched the movie, and I came out of it. Can I just say, she got home and walked inside, and in my mind, I was like, I genuinely have no <laughs> clue which direction she's going to go with this. <laughs> she could really say that movie was shocking, and Christian shouldn't go see it, or she might have loved it. And I was kind of surprised to hear her response. <laughs> so, let me be very clear. I think that the sexual content in there went way too far i think it was way too visual they did not need to do that and it is sad to me that francine rivers but from what i've heard her book redeeming love is very visual as well in the kind of describing of their sex that they have um as a married couple so like maybe i shouldn't have been that surprised but i was surprised like i guess i wasn't surprised because i knew it was coming but I was grossed out, frustrated, annoyed, whatever, that they went as far as they could in a PG-13 movie without it becoming R. Um, So I was very frustrated with that. But I will say, I personally really enjoyed the movie. I felt like they did a really good job not sugarcoating prostitution and the darkness that that is in child trafficking. Um, like, I feel like they did a good job of not making it, like, a, be, like, a good thing, and, like, it was very clearly a bad, awful, gross, wrong, disgusting thing that can trap you and trap women into it, um, and so they handled that well, in my opinion, and it was a very redeeming story. Did you feel like, from just a spiritual element for... Christians or even non-Christians going into it that you leave the film being like that was a a Christian movie that was a movie that encouraged my faith walk I think so I think it was very obviously a Christian movie I think they did um very much like Michael Hoseas the main guy character like his faith was strong in the Lord and like he I mean yeah so I think that they did a good job of showing his faith and showing his strength in the Lord to kind of love this woman who is very broken and needed a love that wasn't going to just like give up on her. Um, So yeah, I feel like there was one thing that the podcast mentioned about how like people come away from reading this book and rather than see the story of God being that love and being that thing that is going to love you and and not push you away or give up on you it's 
there's a man out there who's going to love me and not push me away when I mess up and, like, isn't going to give up on me. And, like, that's kind of you're missing the point of the story, which is about God's love, actually. Uh And I can see walking away from this movie being like, oh, my man is out there somewhere and he's going to love me. And don't get me wrong, like, the whole time I was thinking, like, Michael Hoseus is Paul. It's like... (laughs) Aww. I'm, I'm Michael Hosea to Morgan, Hosea, yeah. ladies. Yes. Just one woman. <laughs> I'm not Michael Hosea to everyone. Ones. Right. It's just me. He's mine. That's weird. Uh, um, so, yes. But, again. <laughs> well, I mean, that argument right there, sure. Like, you don't want to go into this movie and then just be, like, so infatuated with the idea of a, a man is going to swoop in and save me and and, you know satisfy all my brokenness and all my needs because ultimately that is god but if we look at the story of hosea and gomer even though it was hosea loving this woman who was unfaithful to him twice or however many times Mm -hmm. and loving her through that and bringing her back that was kind of like a a representation of israel being unfaithful to god like so that's very clear but it's still hosea a man bringing this woman back that's being unfaithful so i feel like that's like yeah the portrayal of that in the movie is similar to how it went in the bible yeah and i will say that in the movie and i don't think that this is giving anything away but if you're like no i don't want to hear yet close your ears for a minute um her kind of like moment of starting to believe in god had nothing to do with Michael. It was all on her own. She, you know, said a prayer, asked for God's help, and he came through for her. And she kind of, in a way, like, with the Lord's help, got herself out of this really terrible situation. Had nothing to do with a man. Like, it was fully God, like, helping her get out of that situation. And so I thought that was cool, too. And don't get me wrong, I I have heard that the movie, the portrayal of this Bible story there are liberties. It's not going to be totally right. perfect. So I'm not saying that, but just in the yeah. regard of what we were just talking about. So let's talk a little bit then. Let's let's focus on kind of the two sides of the coin mm-hmm. because on my Instagram, it was kind of a little bit of a debate going on. So for instance, here here's kind of like one of the, the debates going on. Someone said, I gotta say, I think the content they put in this movie is appropriate, even though it may be on edge, as you say. A problem I have with a lot of Christian movies is that, from my perspective, they seem to sugarcoat a lot of things because they think think certain things are not appropriate for anyone to see. Not saying that people should be eager to see sex scenes in movies or hope that there is cussing, but I feel like, in a certain context... If the directors are trying to show to the audience what an ugly world we live in, blah, blah, blah. Long answer short, I think the content for this kind of story is necessary. Um, So there was kind of like one thing, and that also kind of goes with the person who said, well, the Bible is explicit. So I just, there there is that side of it. Mm -hmm. Just the reality of it, the explicitness of the Bible. Yes, so... I, you know, we can talk about Song of Solomon and how explicit that is and how, like, some people might read that and struggle, like, in a serious way, struggle with wanting to dwell on those thoughts and and lust over that um, relationship and the descriptive things that are being said. Um, So you have to be careful with when you read that, if it's the right time for you to read that and really study it and understand it. Um, But I I personally don't think that there was any need for them to get as explicit in the sexual content uh, as they did. Like, it it went too far. They didn't need to. Like, yes, you can easily turn your head and not watch for a, a minute or whatever, but, like, really... They could have done a beautiful job of making it clear that a married couple, like, finally, like, she felt safe enough with him to have sex and, like, then move on. Like, you know, you don't have to see that to get that idea in your head of, like, oh, finally. I agree. And I I think if I were to see it, which I don't know, I'm still, I, I may not see it. 
I don't know if the benefits of it for me outweigh the negatives. If he were to see it, he would watch it with me and I would tell him when to look away and like I would skip through. So is that a little annoying that we have to do that with a Christian movie? Yes. But does that mean that I'm like, so don't go see it? No, I'm well, not really quite there. So so let me bring in the other side now. Someone responded to kind of the previous comment and said, but doesn't this logic follow that then watching this type of stuff is permissible? Like even if it's real, needed for the story, doesn't mean we should be watching it, letting it into our lives. Uh, and then she mentioned the listening to the Felicia mason imer's podcast that we mentioned uh we talk about abuse sex things of the world and say hey it's part of life slash the world that we live in without watching it or reading descriptions about it Um, that was kind of her gist so that's her pushback and you know i i like both sides of that coin one thing i wanted to say was bring in if you guys are standing really strong on the, there is a portrayal, even though it's married sex, they went too far. As you're, even Morgan, who liked the movie overall, is saying they took that too far. They didn't need to be that steamy. Yeah. Even if you, if you're in that boat of saying, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not going to watch this. There's sex in it. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. And I even, you know, if, if you're going that route, I totally respect that. But I was just thinking through some of the stuff that I have watched in the past that I have really appreciated. And I thought the movie Les Miserables, Les Mis, it's PG-13. I, From my knowledge, it was written by a Christian as well. And in that story, there is the prostitution element. There is literally a scene that I was thinking of where Anne Hathaway, and I'm not trying to get too descriptive here, but she is in the 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 brothel, and mm-hmm. it's a sex scene where she is singing about wanting a better life, and it's I can't remember if you know you you don't see you, you know the scene I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't think it's it's an uncomfortable scene. I'll say that I remember it being very uncomfortable to watch because it was just so like holy moly. <laughs> Uh, so I could see some people maybe before Les Miserables came out being like, oh, there's a, a, a sex scene, a gritty, you know, uncomfortable scene. I'm not going to see it. And I, I respect you. But I, my conscience was totally fine. And I may have looked away at that. Again, they didn't show nudity, but it was clear what was going on. Mm-hmm. I maybe looked away, but overall as a movie, as a film, Les Miserables, I really appreciated it and it really blessed me mm-hmm. and I took good stuff away from it. The good outweighed and in the reality of the, that scene and the reality of what was taking place, I'm not even going to go as far as to say they should have taken that out. Like it, it mm-hmm. was yeah, kind of a powerful theme of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, silly. I was going to say something. (laughs) Well, as you're thinking, but I also want to say there are absolutely films, movies. There's a lot of crap. There's a lot of, I mean, I would even say demonic in how just the lust of the flesh and the sensual stuff is just portrayed. Hollywood overall is a pretty stinking, ugly industry. And so I encourage all Christians watching to be very vigilant with what you watch very vigilant yes and like we'll go back to maybe game of thrones as an example we from what we have heard of game of thrones have not even given it a chance Mm -hmm. and i would encourage the christians watching this you shouldn't have to do too much research on game of thrones in my opinion to say as a believer that wants to guard our heart and protect our purity we're not going to go there we're not going to watch game of thrones that's that's i i say that confidently encouraging you all if the christians watching don't watch game of thrones yeah for the the sexual the extreme sexual content but when it comes to something like this movie that morgan went and saw yeah just because it's a christian movie doesn't mean like all of a sudden it's okay to have sexual content and whatever in there like don't get me wrong again i will say 
I did not approve of how far they went, in my opinion. Um, it could have been filmed in a classier way, and whatever, um, where there just wasn't that. So that is a bummer to me. But again, I know that the book was also pretty stinking descriptive from what I've heard from friends and whatnot. Um, and so, like, I probably wouldn't have continued reading that if I uh, got to that point. And I'd probably be like, oh my goodness, <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Um, but I think that for me, I watched the movie and a lot of you guys know my testimony. Uh, I was not a virgin when I met Paul and I had been living in sexual sin for a while um, before meeting him and like watching the movie it just reminded me of that redemptive love that the father does pour out over his children when we come to him and we repent and we turn away from that stuff like there's freedom and beauty. And so I really appreciated the movie because I was like, dang, like, this is kind of my story. Nowhere near as intense as hers because her whole life story was just insane. Um, but I can see, I could see me having been 17, 18, 19, 20 years old and going and seeing this movie. Like, it would have impacted me big time and would have maybe even encouraged me to step away from that relationship that I was in that was very wrong and sinful um, and wait for a man and and build my relationship with the Lord. And so that's why I'm not totally writing it off. But like Paul said, if you are like, no, I'm not going to see this. I'm not going to put myself in that possible temptation. I'm not going to put myself in this situation where I could stumble total respect and like way to go yeah but also don't put that conviction on someone who is like well actually it really touched me and like impacted my life so you're telling me that like <laughs> i'm not I'm a allowed sinner because yeah. i went and watched it like i just don't think that we should be that heavy on this movie specifically whatever is not done in faith is sin and if you just have you strong conviction in your heart to not to not even go there at all, then you follow that conviction. Mm -hmm. But um, here's an interesting comment. Michaela Huffman said, while we talk about whether or not it is necessary or acceptable to include this content from a viewing standpoint, my thoughts are, what about the actors being asked to portray those scenes? And I just want to say, I think that's a great point. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like the thought that no. there are actors, and to my knowledge, sure hope that they're not actually having right. sex I, I don't believe they are not normally <laughs> but there still is this they're they're creating that oh yeah that scene that image and i don't like that i would feel much better if it was a husband and wife yeah in that scene mm -hmm. um but even then it's still like you got the cameraman and stuff it, it raises some yeah, it's 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 a lot, and that's why I feel like, why did you guys have to do this? You didn't. You did not have to do this for this movie to be just as powerful. Yeah. And, like, you know, to the person who made that Instagram message to you about, like, well, I feel like it's so real, and, like, we should watch things because to understand. I get that, but there's – you never have to go all the way yeah. in showing something to get a point powerfully put across you you really don't <laughs> like just be a little more talented and a little more intentional and you can get your point across without having to literally compromise yeah. two actors which i'm sure they don't look at it as compromising but whatever um in pretending to have sex together and they're not married in real life or whatever so <clears throat> The last thing, the last thing I'll say before we get to your all's comments, I, I just something that I kind of wrestle with when people come down really hard on these type, maybe on on content of this nature in kind of a Christian movie. Again, I think it it is different when it's coming from a, a secular movie. I think it's there's something unique about it being in a Christian film where they're portraying the heavier things of life. I have a hard time getting past, we'll, we'll talk just about the, the sex for a moment. 
the songs of Solomon being one thing that is very steamy. Another one, if we're talking about the more like heavy kind of dark side of that, read the story of uh, Hosea and Gomer. God uses the word W-H-O-R-E or W-H-O-R-E-D-O-M like 20 times. And he, there are some descriptive things about her going back to her lovers. There are other passages, again, particularly in the Old Testament, where there is descriptive, not in the sense of like you're reading a romance novel, and so that's maybe where it's different. Yeah. But still, but again, Songs of Solomon, though, going back to that, like that is descriptive. So you got the descriptive, and then you got just kind of the gritty in the Bible. And I know that there's a difference from jumping up to the big screen where you can see it, but still reading is a visual thing as well. Yeah. So what do we do with that? Yeah. Does it mean we should all of a sudden start making movies about that stuff? Not necessarily, but... But those who say, oh, I do not take part in this, Mm -hmm. but then if you went and had the Songs of Solomon read from the pulpit on Sunday, which you said... Your old church, they kind of made a big deal of like, we're going to be going through the Songs of Solomon 17 and up or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I just, I just want to be real. You know, this stuff is in the Bible. And so let's just be real with ourselves. But perhaps if you're like a 15 year old with this crazy imagination and maybe you're struggling with PORN, try not to get demonetized here. We'll see (laughs) what happens with this video. If you know yourself and you're like, I just don't need to be going there right now avoid this and maybe avoid reading the songs of Solomon. I don't know. Yeah. But I think this is a good discussion. And I think after hearing your take on it, after doing some research on my own, you're going to have to use your discernment. But I think there is a place to watch and appreciate this film. If I were to watch it, I would make sure to be looking away. I'd probably watch it with Morgan. We'll see if I do or don't. Mm -hmm. But also I commend those who decide I'm going to hold off for to protect my own spirit and my own purity. I respect that as well. Yes. Guys, comment below. I see, man, we got a good audience going right now. Lots of back and forth happening in the comment <laughs> section live. Those of you watching the playback, let's keep the combo going. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say after hearing our perspective. Where are you guys falling with this movie, Redeeming Love? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Morgan, hit the Patreon Uh, What do we call it? The Patreon enroll. We'll be right back. (laughs) Have hope. And be free. (laughs) As, As you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals, which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do this without you all. If you believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, click the link below or just go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show.